Hey everybody, Jeff Manchester here. Welcome to another Let's Play video. Today we're playing with Moximo from Sonokinetic. Now this is a huge library, not huge in terms of gigage and space, but huge in terms of sound. On the low end alone, eight double basses, 16 celli, six bassoons, a contra bassoon, and none of this stuff was sort of doubled up and stacked together in post, meaning they didn't have like two double basses and then they just sort of added them together. Those instruments were all in the room. So this has a huge sort of superhero movie bite to it. And instead of listening to me sort of blab on about it, I made a little sample really quick, about 90 seconds. Um, there's some automation, some fader throws and stuff to sort of add some life. Check it out. And then once we're done, we'll explore the library together and uh, we'll get a feel for it. Here's Maximo. Okay, just some light Christmas music for the family. Anyway, um, I lied. There is no automation. Why did I say there was? Well, people have a kind of perception about phrase libraries and that they're kind of stale and stuff. I just wanted to show you what these pieces sound like on their own, unadulterated, straight from the library. I didn't do anything. Let's explore the interface here. So I have base 1.5, which is where all our intense sort of Hans Zimri stuff comes from. Let's have a, a quick listen. I'll just solo it here. Okay, now I know that this interface, I mean, it looks like we're looking at some sort of ancient Mayan riddle. Trust me, it gets a lot easier on the eyes once you sort of play with it, and it's actually kind of cool that they're taking a different sort of uh, UI approach and um, look and feel. Anyway, what's what's happening here? Well, people who are familiar with um, the other phrase libraries coming out of Sonokinetic, they'll understand this, but for those who haven't been introduced, we have three panes here. And if I click on this, I get a sample, uh, a preview, if you will, of all the other um, phrases within this low section here. There's a mid and a high as well. So the visual rep representations here sort of indicate what these sound like. And to hear them, actually, we can just click this little uh, button. And if I don't like that one, I'll go here. I'll go down here. And if I like that, I'll just click it. And then it becomes, you know, it becomes uh, it's set in stone. So um, we also have, you know, some combinations here. Um, and these are all sort of the same, right? The mid is the same as the mid as the slot above. But the, the, the point is, is to sort of mix and match and pick and choose to come up with something that's very inspiring. So just on the left here, this, it's, a, it's an M. It looks like sort of a, an envelope that someone chewed into, but it's an M. And I can decide to um, make sure that these two aren't playing and only this one is playing or I can just have these two playing, or I think I can just solo them by hitting Command, and then, yeah, and then drag around, and this will be soloed. So anyway, this this is just a little indication of the mod wheel, and we can turn it on to affect the velocity and expression and sort of volume and gain of the track. This little thing here, um, this is basically going to play back the sample either twice as fast or a little bit faster or much slower, and it all sounds great, by the way, because they're very well sampled so even if it's slowed down it's still gonna sound pretty realistic um, over here we have the MIDI section so we can actually see what notes are being played and the really cool thing is I can take this MIDI and just drag it into logic or whatever DAW you're using and throw it on let's say a synth track and now I have the MIDI from that track and I can you know put whatever instrument I want on that track and then have those two things play together to sort of create a sort of hybrid sound just close out of that and this is really cool. This is harmonic shift. Let's actually head down to maybe the strings to show you the harmonic shift and what it can do. It's one of these things that sort of needs to be heard instead of explained by an over-caffeinated composer like myself. So here's the string menu. Um, again, very consistent, right? Just have different colors. If I engage harmonic shift on these guys, what you're going to see is if I hold down a triad here, which is how we get sound out of this library and other phrase libraries from Sonokinetic, Let's have a, let's just solo this. Okay, so that's it on its own. Now watch this section right here, because this is where the harmonic shift sort of takes place. So, as I move up with my right hand down here, you can see these notes being applied. Have a listen to what happens to the phrase. And the 
cool part happens when we can uh, so basically we're, we're playing around in the same scale keeping everything sort of in the same pitch and we don't have to do a lot of complicated note changing with our left hand and, and do more triads so I can make it so that only the top part here is um, doing harmonic shifting while the mid and the bottom part stays sort of in the same place have a listen to this <laughs> Okay, so more sound stuff here. If we click on this little plus button, we're gonna get some more options. And uh, so I clicked it, boom, right there, and up pops some more parameters that we can affect. There's so much we can sort of access. So we have volume, and I can go up here, shift these up and down. We have pan, so I can pan these around in the stereo field. You know, if you have an idea of what your orchestra is gonna look like, you can replicated here with the pan features. We have crossfade, which basically um, sort of either chokes or extends the decay of the sample when you're playing it back, so that if you want a more realistic sound, um, we'll sort of hear sort of artifacts of the phrase sort of fade away the longer we draw out uh, this crossfade, or they'll sort of get choked if we're just sort of using, let's say, a, a very quick, uh, you know, sort of string sec string sort of phrase. It just We just want it to sort of pop in and out and then disappear. Um, we have the offset function, which is really cool. Why don't I go down to the strings, and, and I'll, or the woodwinds rather, and I'll show you what, what happens with uh, the offset function, because there we have even more opportunity for uh, tweaking and stuff, namely doing some cool polyrhythm. So, so now we have, well, we played with strings and brass. Now we're doing woodwinds, blue. So have a listen to this. Um, maybe do a mid for this one, just so we have some variation. That sounds good. Okay, so if I hit plus, and then I go down here, into offset. I can basically change the point at which the engine of Maximo starts playing back these samples so that we can create some cool polyrhythms and stuff. So here's how it sounds on its own. I'm going to put everything in the center. Okay, and if I put this one to the far left and to the far right and maybe somewhere in between, check out how the rhythm changes. The phrases are the same, but the samples are starting and looping in different places. Have a listen. Anyway, you get the idea. This is a super sort of accessible and deep sample library. I know I talk a lot about phrase li libraries on my channel, but I don't often get the opportunity to review one and for anyone who doesn't know about Sonokinetic, like, please let this be your gateway drug into all other stuff. The last thing I want to say about phrase libraries is some people think the phrase libraries maybe not be, may, might not be for them. They want to compose everything from scratch, and that's fine, but phrase libraries are meant to sort of, I think, sit and sort of support your original compositions, but they're also really instructive. They're very educational because when you're listening to a, a phrase library, you're hearing the way that an orchestra should sound. So if you're coming up with a melody of your own and you want to sort of go, well, how did they, you know, how, how can I make this more real? Then just pull up a couple of phrases from Maxim or whatever, and that'll give you an indication of, you know, how it should breathe, how it should groove, and then you can go off and sort of, you know, mix and match and bypass and, and whatever. So anyway, this is Maximo. Hopefully you like the review. Hopefully you like the track. Um, yeah, get it on the website. It's going to be in my description. So if you want to just check that out there and, and head over and uh, there's even more demos and more great stuff from them on the website. So like, comment, subscribe, share, blah, blah, blah. Thank you so much for watching. That was Maximo.